Hi, uh, this is Amit Kirti here. Uh, in this video, I would like to talk about a search algorithm called as depth first search. So the items for discussion would be depth first search algorithm introduction, depth first search algorithm example, depth first search algorithm itself. And then we will analyze the algorithm using the example that we will discuss in section two. So depth first search is an algorithm for traversing a graph in search of an element. So basically when you have a graph and you want to search an element in a particular graph, you can use depth first search. We generally start in, in a depth first search algorithm, we generally start at one particular node of the graph and then we dive deep into the graph till we actually hit the particular element or we actually hit a dead end that is leaf of a graph. So if we hit a dead end or the leaf of the graph, we will go one step up and then again deep dive from that parent to the next side graph. So this process will continue till we actually find the element or we have deep dive into all the elements and then we have figured out the element actually does not exist. So the, the, this is how depth first search actually works. So depth first search can be used to check connectivity of a graph. So if I have a particular graph, I may have disjointed subgraphs or I may actually have isolated vertex, vertex which is not connected to the main graph. So if my aim is to figure out if a particular graph has an isolated vertex or if I have disjointed subgraphs in a particular graph, then depth first search is one of the ways in which we can figure it out. Now I actually got a, a video of depth first search being used to create a maze. So this I found it on Wikipedia. So I thought probably I can add it to this particular presentation. So you will see that uh, I, in this example, we will actually go and create a maze using the depth first search algorithm. The red dot that you see here is the dot which is creating the maze. So he will randomly at any point go either up or down or left or right. So if he hits a particular wall or if he goes left, right and hits himself in the maze, then he will backtrack and then traverse a new path. So probably we can have a look at the how the algorithm how the uh, maze actually works. So this is this video is slightly fast, so you may not be able to figure out how he does a backtracking. So you will see that he goes around, he gets stuck, and then he returned back. And then now you, uh, he is going, and then he hit here, and he has come back. So now you can see he is trapped. So he will get hit and then come back and starts on the next process. So he will backtrack and go in a new path. This way he will create the new paths in the maze. So this process will continue and the maze gets created. So let's actually take an example of a graph and see how I can perform a depth first search on a particular graph. So I have a graph here which has about six vertices and they are connected to each other. Now let's start with some vertex. Let's say I start with A. Since I'm going to do a depth first search from A, I will choose the next vertex. So I have three options. Either I can choose C, D or E. So I have chosen C. So from A, I go to C and from C, I need to go further ahead so i have two options either i can go to d or f so let's assume that i go to d and then from d if you notice the only possibility that i have is to go to a but then if i go to a then i'll keep on going in a circle loop from d to a a to c again d a c so what i do is i cannot go to a so a happens to be an ancestor of d so i will put a dotted edge to a and then i'll go back to c so i'm backtracking to c and then from C, I will try to find go in depth into the next path. That is from here, I can't go back to A because that is my parent vertex. I can't go back to D because that's where I had gone. So the only option that I have left from C is that I can go to F. So from C, I go to F. Then from F, I have two options. Either I can go to E or B. So let's assume I go to B. Then with B as the vertex, I again deep dive and go to the next vertex that is E. 
Now, once I reach E, I cannot go back to A because it's my parent vertex. I can't, uh, I mean the ancestral vertex. I can't go back to B because it is my parent vertex. And I can't go back to F as well because it has already been traversed and it's a parent vertex. So I have hit a dead end of, uh, of this graph. So I will draw the two edges that are connecting to the parent and the ancestor using da da dashed lines. So that means I have hit the dead end. So I have to go one step back and go to B. So when I go to B, I will actually see that I don't have anywhere else to go. So I will go back to F and from F, I again see that I have nowhere else to go. So I'll go back to C and from C, I see that I have gone in all the depths possible. Then I go back to A and from A, I will go out of the gra graph. So this is how you see a depth first search being um, executed. So generally depth first search is implemented as a stack. So I, I'll just show you an example here. So in the stack, I will put the element A. Then I will stack up C. Then from C, I will stack up to D. And since I hit a dead end, I will remove D. And from C, I go to F. So I will stack up F on top of C. From F, I will go to B. So F and then B, B sits on top of F and from B, I actually go to E. So E will sit on top of B. Now, since we have reached the dead end and there is no way to go any further from E, E gets dropped and I again come back to B. And then when I reach B, I actually check if I can go to any other place so that I can stack it up. And since there are no other possibilities from B, I will remove B and then I go back to F. Now, once I reach back to F, I see that I have visited all possibilities from F. So there are no more, no more possibilities. So I'll remove F as well. Then I go back to C and from C, I realize that I have reached all possible paths. So I go back to A and from A, I realize that I have visited all vertices. So we pop out A as well. So this is a stack way of implementing a depth first search to create a depth first search tree. Now, this is the algorithm for depth first search. Uh, the, the main uh, algorithm actually is this depth first search function, which creates a depth first search tree. And this particular for loop here traverses the vertices in such a way that whichever vertex is marked as zero, it starts a depth first search from that vertex. So for example, suppose I have a graph like this. Uh, you will see that there are two subgraphs which are disjoint. So, so I have specifically taken an example where I can show you multiple trees getting created using this uh, particular algorithm. So I have one graph with A, C, D, F, B and G which are connected to each other. And then I have one more graph G, H, I and J which forms another graph and these two subgraphs are disjoint. So how, let's see how this particular algorithm works when we have disjointed graphs. So what I do is according to the algorithm, mark each vertex in V as zero. So what I have done is I have marked all the vertices here with zeros and I set the count value as zero. Then for each vertex V in the, the vertex set V do, what do we do? If V is marked with zero, we start the DFS algorithm. So initially we will start with some vertex A. So I will pass DFS and I will pass the vertex A. So I will get into this function with A as my starting vertex. I will, I will count increment count to count plus one and mark the vertex with the count. So count was zero, so count becomes one. So you will see that I have marked A with one. And then for each W in V, that is each vertex that is in present in vertex set V and it has to be adjacent to V. If W is marked as zero, so who is adjacent to A now? C, D and E. So let's pick C. What do we do? Since C is marked as zero, so this condition satisfies, I will call DFS on that vertex. That is, I will call DFS of C, which effectively means I have added C next to A. So I will call DFS on C and then I will increment the count. So count becomes two and mark V with the count. So you will see that C gets a count of two. Then I, what do I do? 
for each vertex w in v which is adjacent so any vertex that is adjacent to c and that has been marked with zero so who are adjacent to c which are marked with zero they are actually d and f so what do i do i choose one of them so let's say i choose d and then what do i do it since it is marked zero i'll call dfs on d so the dfs algorithm gets called again with d so it's as good as saying i have added the edge d from c then i again increment the counter so counter becomes 3 and since i have chosen d i have to mark d with the count value so the d gets a value of 3 and then i again check from d which adjacent vertex has been uh, is present in v and which is marked with 0 so let's see what happens when we have d now you have d and the only adjacent vertices are c and a so when you look here you will see that c is not marked with 0 so i will go ahead in the for loop and check the next vertex which is a a is also not marked with 0 so this for loop is done so what do i do since i am calling dfs inside dfs inside dfs it's a recursive call so i will go back one step that is i will go back one step to c and then i check the next vertex from c which is marked 0 so from c the vertex that is marked 0 is f so what do i do i go to f so what do i do here since d f is marked with 0 i will call dfs on f and dfs gets called and count gets incremented by 1 and i mark that vertex f with 4 so i will continue like this and i will mark b and mark b will be marked with 5 then i go to e then e will be marked with 6 and since i reach the end and there are these two edges cannot be reached i will put a dashed line connecting both of them and then from e i go back to b from the dfs actually uh, unrolls uh, from the recursion and it goes back to f the recursion again unrolls and it goes back to c and the recursion unrolls and it goes back to a so when when i go back to a it's as good as saying i had entered dfs and one round of dfs is done so i go i am done with this so i go back to this main particular algorithm that is dfs of g once i go back to the dfs of g i will actually go in this for loop and check which vertex is marked as zero i will see that a is not marked as zero neither is c nor d nor f nor b or e the only vertex that is marked next as zero is g so what do i do i will call dfs of g so g becomes the new starting vertex and i will call dfs of g and i will increment count and mark that as 7 so from g i search which are the next vertex which is marked as 0 so from g i have two possibilities h and j so i will choose h and then i again call dfs so this particular step goes ahead and then we will mark h with 8 then i will go to i mark i with 9 then i will go to j mark j with 10 so in this way i will parse the next particular subgraph and make a depth first search tree out of this subgraph so from j i can go i cannot go back go to g so i make i put a dash line and then from j i go to i and h and g and then i come out so i'll reach back to this algorithm and since none of the vertices are zero i will come out of this algorithm so i am done with creation of depth first search subtrees thanks for watching this video so this was the depth first search video thanks